Hello and welcome to Job Point P12. And today we're looking at um, performing a first hand investigation to determine the effects of planting density on plant growth and or yield. So first of all, a couple of revision points. Um, a plant is something that grows in close, close proximity to other plants, either of the same species or a different species. So the important uh, differentiator here is the, uh, a crop and a pasture. So a crop is something that's made up of all the same species and usually the same variety of that species. So all wheat or a crop of cotton or a crop of barley, etc. Um, and so plants that are of a different species from a crop are considered weeds. However, um, a pasture, in, on the other hand, is uh, a pasture is something that's made up of several different species growing together usually legumes such as grasses and clover. Um, and obviously that's used for animal feed and a crop is generally used for um, harvested for human consumption in most cases. So um, obviously the growing plants interfere and interact with each other in different ways. Modification of microclimate, allelopathy, acting as a host for pest and disease and competition for resources. And so what we're gonna look at now is um, breaking it up into vegetative yield and reproductive yield. And then uh, we're going to look at the experiment we did on density. Um, because uh, the, the experiment was um, ultimately trying to harvest um, wheat grain, um, it would have been reproductive yield. Uh, however, we measured the leaf area because we didn't let it go to um, grain. So um, we were measuring the vegetative yield. So let's have a look at the difference between reproductive yield and vegetative yield first. So with vegetative yield, uh, the management decision about the density of plants in the final crop will influence the yield per hectare significantly. And it's been shown that with increasing plant density down here, um, plant density increasing, uh, the vegetative yield uh, or leaves and stems increases to a certain maximum level or, or also known as optimum density. After that, any further increase in plant density does not result in any further vegetative increase. And so it flatlines here. So this here um, is vegetative yield and vegetative yield is basically the leaves, the stems and the roots. The reproductive yield is the grain, the fruits and the flowers. So basically most of the plant is vegetative yield um, or vegetation. Now, um, as the plant density increases, the dry matter, which we measure in for vegetative yield in, um, we call it dry matter or DM because um, it's measured when it's dry rather than um, with water in it. We don't measure the water because it's meaningless to us. Um, also biomass yield um, increases up to a point um, and then when you get more and more plants um, or the plant density increases you don't actually get any more yield every individual plant is getting smaller and smaller and smaller um, and each plant will have less yield but there will be more of them so you end up with the same amount of yield so what happens here is you're increasing the seed costs um, but you're not increasing your yield so you don't want to keep going past here too much because um, it's going to cost you more money in seeds, but you're not going to get any return from yield. However, if you do plant extra, uh, it's not going to drop your yield, uh, which is good. And as we said, every plant as it gets here, uh, here, um, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Now we move on to reproductive yield and the material harvested, um, which often is reproductive yield in a plant. We have harvest fruit or grain and that kind of thing increases with increasing plant density until a maximum is reached further increases in the plant density then result in a decrease in reproductive yield. And we can see that here. Um, similar to the last one, it, re it rises with increasing density. It gets to an optimum density and then it drops off again um, and actually decreases. So the biomass um, is dropping or the yield is dropping off. So um, as we said, uh, well, sorry, the density chosen will be determined to some extent by the end use of the crop. If vegetative yield is required, example fodder or feed crop for, of oats for animals, a density should be chosen that ensures the maximum vegetative yield. Any density higher than this will not increase vegetative yield. Um, so here we have um, the same kind of deal with as the last graph, plant density is increasing, but as, and as you do increase the plant density, um, the yield is getting higher up until an optimum density. Now the downside is um, if you keep going past that point, then the yield actually drops off because remember each plant is getting smaller and smaller and smaller as we move along here. And when that happens, um, the plants cannot uh, get to maturity. And if they can't reach maturity, um, they cannot um, 
get to the reproductive stage of growth and produce, say, grain or fruit, etc. So that's the reason that as every plant gets smaller and smaller and smaller, um, as we go this way, you have less and less and less plants actually reaching full maturity. And so they can't actually reproduce um, properly because they're just not getting enough energy. There's too much competition between plants. So the reproductive um, growth drop or the reproductive yield drops off. So uh, on the other hand, as we set up here, if you increase the, um, if you just keep increasing the plant density, if you're trying to harvest, say, the leaf area of, say, lettuce or something like that, um, you can throw in double the density and you'll still get the same yield as the optimum, um, but it'll just cost you a bit extra in seeds. Whereas if you um, put in double the optimum density um, of something like wheat, where you're trying to harvest the reproductive yield, your yield will drop off, um, you know, possibly to very low or, or minimal or nothing maybe, um, because the plants will be so small, each individual plant will be so tightly packed together that they will not get to um, reproductive stage because they will not reach maturity. So uh, the number of plants per hectare or the density that we want to plant our crop um, will have a minor effect on vegetative yield, but a significant effect on reproductive yield of a plant. Um, in order to achieve the correct density, we use precision machines um, and they're developed to place the seed at desired intervals. And the example here for wheat is 80.5 kilograms per hectare. And you can watch these videos, which will show you um, an example of um, seeders, that precision seeders that will seed the plant or the seed at exactly um, the desired uh, density or the desired uh, distance from each other so that you get ideal amount of growth and um, you spend as little as possible on seeds while getting the maximum um, output or yield. So really the core of this uh, dot point is designing an experiment and we did this experiment previously. Um, the aim of it was to determine the effect of density on the growth in height of wheat. Now the important thing here is you put height um, because um, that's the thing we measured. We measured height. So you need to, in the aim, put the thing that you actually measure in there um, because growth um, isn't, we don't, we don't measure growth, we measure height in particular. So the method was we had four garden beds, we split them into two and we had four different wheat densities that were planted in the eight plots um, and the wheat height was measured weekly. So we had 60 kilos, 70 kilos, 80.5 kilos, which is the recommended density or the control and we had 90 kilos a hectare, which we obviously uh, modified down to the size that we had. Now, before we go back to that, you can see here this diagram. Um, we had four garden beds. We split them into, uh, we randomly chose the location of these from picking numbers out of a hat, which is randomization. Uh, we had 15 centimeter spacing between rows. Um, we had 12 rows um, or eight, we had eight rows in each one, each um, half of a garden bed and each, um, each density was planted twice, as you can see in 90, 90. Um, these were chosen randomly. Okay, so if, if you were drawing, um, if you were answering a question in the HSC, um, it might be helpful to just throw this in on the side as I'll show you shortly. So how do we, um, how did we make this a good, fair experiment? We need to think about control, standardization, randomization, and replication. Um, so the control was the recommended density of wheat, and that's 80.5 kilos a hectare, as I said before. Um, so that's the kind of recommended best density that has been found um, for wheat. And um, the way we standardized, or sorry, for the control, we, all, we tested all the other ones against that and um, to see if they were any better um, in our situation. So in terms of standardization, we use the same plot sizes, the same amount of water, same seeds, and the same soil. Uh, in terms of randomization, we, um, we chose the plots to put in the densities from out of a hat, and that's to reduce the bias that we might bring into the experiment. In terms of replication, we had multiple rows, two plots for each density, and we had lots of seeds per row, depending on the density. So our results showed that the optimum density um, was actually the recommended density that was given in the first place. Um, lower densities get, uh, led to increased weed levels and higher densities led to more intercrop competition. So when you plant the wheat plants very far apart, you get a lot of weed growth. And when you plant them very close together, you get um, smaller individual plants. And ultimately that would lead to um, lower grain yield. And it also led to smaller leaves on each one. Uh, here's our diagram. And you can see here, um, there's a couple of questions on this. 
Um, this first one from 2015, describe an experiment to test the effect of plant density on growth or yields. In your answer, show how the experiment demonstrates sound experimental design. It's good to put an aim in here. So um, as I said, to determine the effect of plant density on the yield of Australian prime hard wheat. Um, four densities were planted, 60, 70, 80.5 and 90 kilos a hectare with 12 rows in each density across two half plots. So I'm describing the um, experiment here and how we did it, but I'm also showing the four um, design principles which we need to talk about. So replication, and I've shown that's replication. The next one I'm showing is randomization. So den density locations in each garden bed were randomly assigned by pulling numbers out of a hat. That's randomization. All other variables outside density were kept the same. Example, water, volume, sunlight, soil type, etc. standardization. And it's nice to put these things in here, even though a marker might be able to um, find these things. Uh, if you can really clearly go, here's the standardization, here's the randomization. Um, it kind of um, makes it easier for you to get the marks. Um, 80.5 kilos was the recommended density, so it was used as the comparison with other densities. In other words, the control. And so altogether, addressing these factors gives sound experimental design and a fair test. So I've described the experiment. Um, I've shown how it demonstrates exper sound experimental design because I've addressed all four aspects. Um, if you don't address all four aspects, you cannot get six marks. This question here um, is almost a little bit of a trick question. It's a hard question. Um, and it says, uh, well, you, it's an example of uh, you needing to read the question very carefully. And I'll show you why in a sec. So which one of the following graphs shows the correct relationship between plant density and dry matter yield per plant? Now, if you go off um, you know, dry matter being vegetative yield, um, then at first glance, this question, you, if you don't read the question very carefully, you probably think it's this one um, because it most look like, looks like um, the graph we saw earlier for vegetative yield um, up the top here. So that's the first thing that you might think. Um, however, if you look a bit closer, the, the actual answer is A. And the reason is because it says here per plant. So as the plant density gets higher, um, each individual plant will produce less and less yield. Now we're not talking here per hectare um, or anything like that. We're talking about per plant because of these last two words. If these last two words weren't here, this would be the correct answer. However, because they've put in per plant, the answer is this one. So you really need to um, read the question very carefully. If they change this to per hectare, this would also be the answer. But as it turns out, this is the answer because it says per plant. So you really need to make sure you're careful with that and reading questions carefully. This last question, um, a researcher conducted a field experiment to determine the effects of planting density on cauliflowers. Um, three planting densities are used. A, 20 centimeters apart, 50 centimeters apart, B, and C, 80 centimeters apart. And this, this um, box here shows that, you know, A was planted here at the top of the slope, B, mid slope, C, bottom slope. Um, it says the yield from A was 1250 grams, yield from B, 1500 grams, and yield from C, 1850 grams. It says which treatment is in this experiment is most likely to produce the greatest number of cauliflowers. Now, all this other information about soil and where they're planted um, are relevant for the questions that follow, which aren't related to this dot point. But um, at first you think to yourself, um, you know, which treatment is most likely to produce the greatest number of cauliflowers? And you think, well, 1850 is the highest yield, so surely it is C. But remember, this is the greatest number of cauliflowers. So um, clearly, if you, it doesn't ask about size of cauliflowers or weight, it just asks about the total number. So clearly from this density spacing here, if you have your um, cauliflowers planted 20 centimeters apart, you're going to have more of them than if you plant them 50 centimeters apart. And you're going to have more of them if, than if you plant them 80 centimeters apart. So the answer here is the greatest number of cauliflowers is going to be um, with treatment A, which are 20 centimeters apart because there's far more of them in the same area. So again, um, similar to this question, it is a um, challenging question and one that you need to be careful about reading um, the question carefully and it says here to produce the greatest number, not the greatest yield. If it said yield, the answer would be C, but because it says the greatest number, the answer is A here.